Hey there, everybody. If you are just joining us um, and you're watching the replay, I want you to make sure that you fast forward a little bit here um, because we will be taking a little bit of time to get everybody onto the call. So this may take a couple of minutes um, and I wouldn't want you to just sit around and waste your time. So just fast forward the cursor if you're watching the replay and then you can see where we begin. I'm so excited to serve you today. Hello there, Ryan and Julia. If you guys can hear me, um, you should be on mute, it, I think. And if you wanted to get yourself off of mute, um, they would have given you instructions. Or if you're on your computer, you're more than welcome to just um, click on your unmute button, which should be in your bottom left corner. So if it's there, yeah, Ryan just muted himself. So I'm assuming everybody can hear me, right? Um, if you can hear me, please tell me in the chat box. And I just sent everybody a little hi message just so that you can see where that chat box is. Can everybody hear me? You're also more than welcome to speak to me and say, yes, you can hear me. Oh. Ryan. Okay. Hey guys, so thank you so much for joining. I just want to make sure that every loud and clear Ryan says, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> for a second there, I was like, oh my word, we're going to have to do something here now because what's going on. But thank you, Ryan, for letting me know um, that you can hear me. So people are joining right now. Um, if you are on computer, um, welcome. If you're on your phone, welcome. Um, you are more than welcome to ask me questions, to say hello. If you're on your phone, you can unmute yourself um, by simply just um, pressing your mute and unmute button. If you cannot do that, then just um, let me know somehow. Um, and we can start. So I'm just going to give it like two minutes or so for people to come on. I'm assuming that everybody can hear me. So while we're sitting here, can everybody kind of give me an idea of where you are from and how you heard about this webinar? And then we can take it from there. So if you're just sitting there, I'd love to know where everybody is from. Don't be shy. You're more than welcome to speak to me if you're on the phone. Now we're a shy crowd tonight. Sydney is from Boston. And who else is just here? Oh, I've got someone from Atlanta. Mickey is from Lexington. Hi, Mickey. Thank you for being here. Mickey is from Lexington. Um, so if you're just joining us and you're new to the Zoom software, if you're on your phone, please put yourself on mute for me by just using your phone's mute button itself. Otherwise, I can hear all of your background that goes on, and that would just be horrible for all of us. Um, welcome, Wolfson, who is from Needham, Massachusetts. Yay! So excited to have everybody here. Um, all right, so if you're on your computer, um, your dashboard is very self-explanatory, but just in case, um, I want you to know that you can chat with me via the chat system. If you're on your phone, don't worry, you're still gonna be able to ask questions. I am gonna give you um, the opportunity 
um, to ask questions and then you can unmute yourself. if you're just joining and you're on your phone please do put yourself on mute because otherwise um, we can hear what you're saying and I don't want to put you on mute because then you won't be able to unmute yourself so if you're joining by a phone with a lot of us here now please remember to put yourself on um, on mute for me um, okay if you're on your computer as I was saying the dashboard is pretty self-explanatory um, and you can see down there that you will be able to mute yourself you'll also that's about it that you can do but then you can also chat to me um, in the chat box the chat box is gonna go to everyone just to make it a fun little family time here um, and if you are joining us by a phone then um, just put yourself on mute with your own mute button and I'm gonna start in about two minutes time I'm just that email went out about six or seven minutes ago and I just want to make sure we allow everybody to come on um, it's really so fun to have you here if you've joined now recently and you haven't told me yet where are you from guys like where are you calling from um we have people from atlanta here we have lexington and austin um and needham so share with us um where you're from and how did you hear about this webinar if you've, you've just joined and if you're on your phone and you want to tell me you're more than welcome to do that too um awesome right just a couple more minutes if you're joining perfect all right so someone is still we can hear someone so if that person can just put themselves on mute if you've called in from a phone then please do put yourself on mute so we don't hear you Okay, so I'm going to kick this off and just first say thank you so much to all of you for being here. Um, it really is just such a pleasure to have you and I want to give you a high five and I want you to give yourself a high five for taking the time out of your busy day to come to this webinar and to invest in yourself and really get yourself um, in a place where you can start to build more clarity around what it is that you want for a career. Um, as I was working with my own coaches and energy people to really um, get myself ready for tonight and make sure that I hold this space for you guys, um, you know, I really wanted to make sure that I serve you in the best way possible. So at it, with that, even though we're going to be discussing some specific things tonight on the Flip Your Script webinar, um, I do want to ask, you know, what are you hoping to get out of tonight's webinar? And if you're on your phone, please do mute yourself. Um, I can hear everything that goes on in the background. <laughs> All right, perfect. So anybody here, like people who are here who are um, wanting to tell me, what are you hoping to get from tonight's webinar? As you've signed on for this, what were you specifically hoping to get besides everything that I had said we were going to strive and do here? Anybody want to tell me? You're more than welcome if you're on a phone to tell me via phone or if you're on your computer, feel free to type into the chat box. All right. We're a bunch of so high oh, hearing success stories. Thank you, Ryan. Yes, I'm definitely going to be sharing some of those for you. So that's perfect. Who else has something specific that they're hoping to hear about the um, in this webinar? Thank you, Ryan, for sharing and, and leading the team here. All right. Okay. So we're definitely going to be sharing success stories and then I'll share a whole bunch of other stuff with you guys, of course. Um, 
But first, I, I really want to um, state my intention and, and tell you about why I'm here tonight. You know, I really do want to propel you to take massive action and really create that career and a job that is going to fill you up and bring you joy and, um, and really just hold the space for you tonight to inspire you to do that. Because to me, you know, I do believe this is important to me because I do believe that if you, if we're all more engaged in what we do, and if we're all more um, excited about our jobs, then we, it is possible for us to um, really just impact the world in a way more positive way and show up a little bit more engaged, be better spouses, be better husbands, and just be better people in the world all around. So what I do here is very important to me, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. All right, so with that, said let's dive straight into tonight's stuff so um the flip your script webinar i'm gonna now for the people who are on computers we're now going to shift into the um screen mode and for those of you who are on the phone you can just listen in and we'll be able to give you a lot of information just by listening as well um all right so i'm gonna go into screen sharing mode here and we're gonna do this and this and now you should be able to see my screen all right so welcome again if you are just joining then I want you to remember to please put your phones on silent silent for me um, if you're on your uh, computer if you're on your phone mute it for me um, and close out any of the browsers if that's there and annoying you at the moment um, and then I also want you to take a moment to really just um, come with an attitude tonight of how can I make this work for me right really come to this and and apply what I'm about to teach you and and make it your own Okay, so what are we going to discuss tonight on the Flip the Script on Your Life webinar? So number one is um, the three ways you're blocking yourself right now from getting clarity on what your perfect career looks like. And then I'm going to teach you how to, a few little things of how you can move past that. Then I'm also going to help you to um, or teach you the exact process that I do with my career clarity clients and my ultimate career boot campers that helps them to get massive clarity and direction and then also take extra steps there. Um, and then last but not least, I'm going to also discuss my proven steps to ensure that you make a career change that's not going to break the bank for you. But just a quick little intro if you're brand new to me, because there's a lot of people on the call tonight that I don't know, and I'm so excited to have you here. Um, so I am originally from South Africa, so that's where the accent comes from. And yes, my name is Hanukkah, and now it's got nothing to do with the Jewish holiday. Um, and I was born and schooled in South Africa, and then... Um, when I was, I think I was about 18 years old or so, I watched this movie, um, Keeping the Faith, with um, uh, Jenna Hill and Edward Norton and Ben Stiller, and it just like um, made me so like an impression on me, and I was like, oh my word, I want to have a job like that chick. I want to be a high-powered flying woman with like a corner office. Um, and just you know go for it and so fast forward a couple of years i had moved to london um, i had massive student loans which is why i moved there in the first place and i landed this job as a money broker in london and um, and it was fun i had so much fun in the hospital, but if you are just joining us put yourself on mute please um, and so what's great, what was so amazing about this, like I had so much fun doing this in the beginning, right? It was so much fun. But then as I continued doing this, I realized that it was not at all what I wanted for my life and what I wanted for my career. And as a result, um, it started to feel a lot like the Wolf of Wall Street. And actually a lot of it was the Wolf of Wall Street, right? I um, was constantly hung over at work. I was constantly stressed out. I was gagging on my way to work because I was so nervous. And just very quickly, I, it became, the wheels came off and I realized that this was so not in line with my values and who I wanted to be as a human being and how I wanted to live. So how did I get myself out of this? Well, 
I made a commitment to myself then and there. I was so unhappy. I remember I looked up at my boss and I was looking at him. I'm like, oh my God, like you're 20 years older than I am. You've been here for like 15, 20 years and you're still doing the same thing. And if I stay here, I'm going to be you. And I'm totally going to, you know, have the same experience of just having to spend all of my money on plastic surgery and I'm going to get sick and cancer before I'm old. Right. Totally. I was that, um, how do you say I was that, um, in not insecure, but that vain about it. But in, I then decided that, you know what? I was so miserable. I spoke to all of my friends and everyone and I was like, Oh my God, I hate it. My poor friends who had to listen to me. Um, but one of my friends gave me some great advice and they were like, go and hire a coach. So I made a commitment to myself then and there that I was going to find my purpose. And so I hired, I got clear on my goals. I implemented the principles that I'm about to teach for you tonight and share with you tonight. And I quit my Wall Street job and I became a Pilates instructor. Um, and within two years, I built that brand up to an award-winning status and won the Boston of 50 on Fire Award in 2013. And then... Um, after that, I was kind of like, okay, I've kind of taken this to, to the, where I could. And I was kind of getting a little bored of telling people to pull their apps in and up because there's only so many times you can tell people that a day. And then you're kind of like, oh my God, kill me. Um, so I was like, okay, what is next? And through using again, the principles that I, um, learn from my coach, I decided to become a um, coach. And so in 2013, I started my certification process. And then in 2015, I was awarded the Best of Boston um, Award by Boston Magazine. I've since been featured in the Huffington Post. Harvard University has um, had me in for an interview about how to become an expert in your field um, quickly. Um, and I've also been featured in Boston Magazine. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Number one, so that you can get to know me a little bit better, but also to show you that it is possible for you to do a 180 on your career and become an expert in something else and get really good at something else as well. And the amazing thing is, is that I'm not the only example of this. When I did a little bit of digging, I came across a study by the Society for Human Resource Management that 88% of Americans are happy in their careers. So tonight is all about helping you to become one of those 88% of Americans, okay? Maybe we can even push it to 90% of Americans. So, okay, let's dive straight in. The three ways you're blocking yourself from now from getting clarity on what your perfect career looks like. So first of all, you, as soon as you get an idea of something else that you want to do, you turn to other people and you ask them their opinions. And as a result, they will go, oh, or pull a face, or they won't be as supportive. And then you let their opinions sway you into thinking that, oh, it's a bad idea, or I shouldn't be doing that, right? So if that's you, I want you to stop doing that immediately. Only share your ideas and your um, dreams with people who you know really have your back. And unfortunately, some of our friends will not support us in that because they themselves may be unhappy in their lives. And so you now wanting to go and do something great is making them feel inferior. If you are on the call and you're not on mute, please mute yourself in the bottom corner. We can hear you ruffling your pages. All right. And then secondly, you want to, um, or this is how it goes. This happened to me. Um, I'd have a great day at work and then I'm like, oh no, I'm staying. And then I'd have a bad day at work and I'd be like, oh, I got to get out of here. And then the next day was good at work again. And I was like, no, I'm staying. So you keep turning and toiling, I call it. So you keep talking yourself in and out of leaving your job right now and then wanting to leave, right? Thirdly, you also then say stuff like, I guess I'm vague, I hate my job, I don't know what I want. Now, if that is you, I want you to really start to pay attention to your language. Language is powerful and we don't even realize it. Because every single time you say stuff like, I don't know, I'm vague, and I guess, your brain is in that 
well, she doesn't know and she guesses. And so as a result, your brain can't solve the conundrum of what it is that you want from that perspective. So you really want to start to use language that is in line with what it is that you want to achieve. Because your thoughts, which is the T over there, plus your language, plus your actions is the stuff that will result or give you the results that you want, right? So those three things are super important. Your thoughts, your language, and your actions need to be aligned in order for you to get the results you want. So now I'm gonna come out of presentation mode here for a second, and I'm gonna ask you some questions or ask you to, or ask you to ask me some questions. So who here now has a few questions um, after hearing everything that I've just discussed? And you're more than welcome to either ask me in the chat box or you can also just unmute yourself if you are on a phone and then you can talk to me about that. So who here would like to ask some questions around that? Don't be shy, I promise I don't bite at all. There's about 12 of us here right now, so anybody who would like to ask a question is more than welcome to do so. I'm gonna give you like a couple of seconds to do that, and then if you are not in the mood to ask a question, that's okay too. Anybody, we're all clear on that? Okay, okay, what specifically did your coach help you with is what Ryan is asking. Thanks, Ryan, for asking that question. All right, so basically what my coach helped me with was, and what all coaches help people with, is a um, mindset, which is what we'll dive in in the next bit that I'm going to discuss, um, and B, making you aware of certain things that you're doing that's actually sabotaging you from figuring out what it is that you want to do. Um, the other thing that she also helped me with was to really get clear on what it is that I wanted versus what other people wanted or what I thought other people expected of my life. And then the other thing that a coach really helps you with and that my coach definitely helped me with because remember I moved all the way from London to New York City and then to Boston um, all with the help of a coach. Um, is that they help you to, to stay accountable to yourself. So every single time you're like, oh, it's getting too hard or I'm getting scared, then your coach will be right there to remind you what your, of what your goal is and how that is then important for you to keep moving forward, right? So that is how a coach will really help you. Does that answer your question, Ryan? Did that help? Perfect. Ryan says, yes, mindset and accountability. Anybody else have a question that I can help with? Okay. Ryan, thank you for being a, a go-getter and an Oscar here tonight. And if you're feeling super shy, please don't. Feel free to ask me any questions, all right? Okay, so I'm going to go back into screen sharing mode again. And now we're going to hop on to... Um, the exact process that I took with or that I teach my clients and that I also took um, when I was working with my coach. Okay, so first of all, as I just told Ryan, you want to make sure that you start to shift your mindset from the impossible to the possible. And you do that by starting to shift your focus from what you do want versus what you don't want. So a lot of us are very good at telling um, people like what we don't want. Um, in fact, we spend so much time in the negative mind that it is super important sorry, that it becomes impossible for you to then solve that problem. So it's a little bit linked to what I just said in the previous slides about aligning your language with what you want. So number one, shifting your mindset and um, also your focus. So then number two is you want to pinpoint your perfect career by figuring out what your strengths and your talents are, what it is that you love, what makes you feel alive, and then also get some tools and build awareness to realize when you are in your zone of genius. And in my boot camp, I do this through a whole bunch of exercises um, and um, some deep introspective work. 
And then when you have all of these things together, you want to make sure that you create a master list. And I call this the non-negotiable list, which is like a blueprint that you create so that you can then use it when you're looking for a new job to kind of measure things against. And one thing that I want to also point out is that even if sometimes we think when we're good at something, that's what we have to do. Um, and that's not always the case. So I'm going to give myself as an example here. When I was 16 years old, I went to a career counselor and I was the first person in 16 years to score a hundred percent on this math test. Now I was a B math student, like a strong B math student. And as a result of that taste, the, per, the counselor was like, you know what, you should become an actuarial scientist or an actuary. And I kind of just looked at her and was like, what? But uh, you know, my B, blah, blah, blah. But point being is today, if I have to imagine myself as an actuary, my pure, poor little cubicle would get up and walk away, right? I'm way too much of an, an extrovert. There's way too many other things that I'm interested in, and that isn't one of them. So even if you're really good at something, really make sure that you really like doing it. Just because it comes natural to you doesn't mean that that's what you have to do. Then the third thing moving on here is to identify the exact ways that you're sabotaging yourself from gaining clarity and what fears are in the back of your mind that's preventing you from moving forward. Now, if you're sitting there and you're going, fear, <laughs> because what does that have to do with any of this? Then I want to um, tell you about one boot camper's confession. So she had exactly the same attitude when she uh, got to this specific module, because I have a whole, like one module in the boot camp just about uh, fear. And when I work with my clients one-on-one, -on -one, trust me, we talk a lot about fear. So anyway, so she's rolling her eyes at this. And then at the end of the day, when she was done with it, that was actually the part that she enjoyed most and what helped her the most. And so Christina said, she says, you know, I struggled for eight months to get career clarity by myself. And in only four weeks, this course got me further than I ever thought it could. And then Carrie, another boot camper said, Hanukkah helped me work through each of these fears, challenging me to think about what failure looked like. And then together we explored practical ideas to help me manage them. This made me feel in control. So control, being in control is so important. And, it's, and when you have a lot of fear, you can often feel overwhelmed. And it can so often also just... Um, fog your brain, right? So who here has a lot of fears? I'm going to get myself out of presentation mode again very quickly. Who here has a lot of fears around, you know, what they want to do next? Things like, what if I'm not good at it? What if I don't get paid enough? What if um, I it doesn't exist, or even if it does exist, I somehow mess it up. Who wants to share with us whether you guys have this fear? And again, you can type in the chat box on the right here. Don't be shy. Nobody has any fear. All right, well, you guys are a bunch of very cool, strong people. If you don't have, oh, nope. So Sydney says, I think I fear taking a chance and then being unhappy in the new role. Oh my word, Sydney. This is such a good one. So I completely can so relate to that thing, right? Like, so when you're, when you're working through this, you really want to make sure that you have a lot of clarity on what you want and you want to know what works and what doesn't so that when you're looking for your next role you can ask questions in your interview that's going to help you to identify to make sure that it is the right move for you the other thing that i also want to ask you sydney is what's going to happen if you are unhappy in the role what do you think you'll do then i'm going to give her a chance she's not sure okay so 
I'm going to let you sit on that for a second and I'm going to move on. Like, think about it. So you're unhappy in the role. What thing? What's your next move? Chrissy asks, definitely have fear over making a change. I've been with my company for over six years and I'm so comfortable right now and I worry that I'm going to fail in my next role. So it's a little bit similar, but somewhat different to what Sydney just said. So now I'm going to ask you the same question. What is going to happen if you do fail? Like, what is that going to feel like? What's going to be like? What's going to be the thing there? Ryan says, I have a two-year-old and we're about to purchase a new home. Fear of taking what I already have for granted. Ah, okay. So it's the fear of like, what if there's nothing better out there? So such a valid point as well. Um, the other one that I have here from Sam, I worry about leaving my high paying role to do something I am more passionate about. I enjoy the lifestyle. My job enables me to live, but hate the job. Oh, oh my goodness. All right. So that's also a very tricky one. So, okay, I'm going to let you sit with those fears for a second and I'm going to help you in the next slide. So I'm going to go back into presentation mode. Give me one second. If you're on the phone, thank you for being patient with me. So a quick little thing, um, on fear here. Fear is always triggered by creativity because creativity asks you to enter into realms of uncertain outcome and fear hates uncertain outcome. This is nothing to be ashamed of. It is, however, something to be dealt with. And this is the very wise words from Elizabeth Gil Gilbert, right? So now I want to give you a quick little exercise to do that sometimes really helps my clients to get out of their own way, right? And so this little thing is called the identifying your fears and playing the worst case scenario on it. So on a little piece of paper where you're sitting right now, I want you to write down what your fear is. And then I want you to take it and, and amplify it just a little bit more, right? So you're going to say something like, so we're going to take um, Sam's one. I worry that about leaving my high paying role to do something I'm more passionate about. I enjoy the lifestyle. My job enables me to live but hate the job. So she'll go something like, I leave my high paying job and then I'm going to go broke. And, and then what then? So tell me what's going to happen after you're broke. And by the way, um, apparently like some, some ridiculous amount of people have a fear of becoming a bad lady, right? So you're not alone if you're scared of going bankrupt. But what I want you to do is play out the worst case scenario with your fear and keep asking yourself, and then what? And then what? When you do this, very often you'll go, so say for instance, we're going to stay with Sam. Sam, thank you for posting your thing here for us. You're going to leave your high paying job. Now you're going to go broke. Then what are you going to do? Chances are, I'm going to answer sort of for you now. You're going to go, okay, well, then I'll find another high paying role again. And I, at least I would have tried, right? So you kind of know that you're always going to land on your feet. And if you can't find another high paying job, then you're going to network like crazy. And then you're going to make sure that you talk to all your connections. So you doing this helps you to sometimes realize that what you're fearing is completely irrational and the chances of it happening is zero. And sometimes when you play this game, then you're also going to realize that you ha will have a plan B there will be um, the opportunity for you to fix things and to make things right, right? And that then clears the fear or at least helps you to come up with solutions to whatever your problem may be. And then you can kind of shelf it and move on to what it is that you want to do. Now, the other little game that I didn't give you earlier, I completely forgot, is the what if game. And I want you to think of some catastrophe thing that you're thinking about right now that may go wrong. Um, and then I want you to flip it to the positive. So this is how it would go. You're going to go, um, 
So say for instance, hmm, whose one can I now take? Oh, I'm going to take Sydney's. Sydney's about um, what if, you know, what if I'm unhappy in my next role? So you're going to flip this and you're going to go, what if I'm happy in my next role? What if it's like the best role I've ever had? What if they pay me ridiculous amounts of money to have, to be in this role? What if it's so much fun and I meet the coolest people there? And what if that makes me the CEO of the next company? And what if, and so you can see where I'm getting at, right? You're going to play the positive of this game. So I want you to take a minute here. I'm literally going to give you 30 seconds to play that game on your own just very quickly. And then I'm gonna ask you after the 30 seconds is done to give me some feedback on how you feel. So think of something super stressful and then flip it and then just keep saying the positive. And I'm gonna be quiet for 30 seconds. Off you go. All right, and stop. So everyone, tell me right now, thank you, Ryan. Uh, Ryan says, worst case, having to sell new home, risk of foreclosure because I don't uh, make as much money at first, hard to flip, maybe we sign up for tiny house. So there, he's gonna live in a tiny house if all else fails. Thank you, Ryan, for sharing that. So on the last one where you do the what if positive, tell me how you're feeling now that you played that game for about 30 seconds. I'm gonna give people a chance to type. More hopeful, Sam says. Yes, absolutely, right? Anybody else? Inspired, Sydney says, right? Yes. So this is one of my most popular games that I play all the time when I'm stressing out about something. Um, because you, we've all seen that thing, right? Where they say that saying, where they go, um, uh, pr what? Worry, worrying is like praying for something. No, sorry. Yeah, worrying is praying for something to happen, right? So you you want to flip it and you want to move yourself into a more positive space. Because now my questions to you are going to be: What will happen if you're more hopeful and you're more inspired? Sam and Sydney or anybody else. What's going to happen if you're more hopeful and more inspired? What's going to happen to your actions? Just giving everybody a chance to type. If you are on your phone, feel free to speak to me. Actions will be more positive as well. Yes, Sydney, absolutely, right? So when you are in a more positive space, when you feel more hopeful, then you're gonna be able to um, have more positive actions. And when we have more positive actions, then we're gonna have better results as well. It's just the way the cookie crumbles, right? Um, all right, so I'm gonna pull us back into screen share to share um, the last little bit of our presentation tonight here. Um, all right, we're gonna move on. Okay, so the final thing that you want to do when, um, cause we're still busy with like the steps that I teach my, or the process that I teach to help people get career clarity and, and direction. You really wanna start um, doing your homework and create a plan to take consistent inspired action towards your goal, right? So that's why what I just said with um, playing that game is so important. You want to make sure that you A, do your homework, B, make some backup plans, and then C, start to take that massive action. All right, so our last slide for the night. 
the steps to ensure that you make a successful career transition without breaking the bank. Oh, sorry, it's not the last slide. There's still a few, but um, here's like some of the really cool steps that you can take. So first off, if you're on your phone, um, I hope you're following along great. So number one, you want to taste what you're about to do, right? So if you want to start your own business or you want to change careers, then start it as a side hustle or test the product or the aptitude on the market or in your new career. Now, now you're going to go, well, now you're contradicting yourself, Hanukkah. You just told us like not to talk to people about this. Not when it comes to talking to people who are already in the areas that you want to go into. And make sure when you're talking to those people, you're talking to people who love what they do. Okay? Because there are some people who love being a money broker. And if you talk to them, they're going to tell you that it's the best job ever. But then there's people like me who absolutely do not like it. And I'm going to tell you it's the worst thing that you ever want to do with your life. So you want to speak to enough people to really get what that industry is about and whether you could be interested in it. Then you also want to take classes in that area first or speak to as many people as possible as I just said. Okay, so number one, test. Number two, you want to commit to yourself that you've had enough and you want to create this change. This was really the biggest thing for me is committing to myself that I was going to do whatever it took to create a career that I'm absolutely passionate about. And I've seen it with all of my clients. As soon as they make that commitment, when they sign on to be my clients, when they buy the Ultimate Career Bootcamp, or whatever it is, when they get the accountability or support, when they make that commitment, then things happen. Thirdly, you want to take massive action and you want to take consistent action. So no stopping or chickening out of it or tonight you're looking for a job and then three months later, no, no, you're constantly taking consistent action. Lastly, you want to make sure that you build in the accountability that you need. And this one's huge if you're trying to change careers because let's face it, you didn't exactly stand on the, uh, the roof of your house or on um, Facebook and told everybody that you were attending tonight's webinar. If anything, you kind of did it in secret, right? And so this is such a weird space to be in when we're trying to change careers and we can't really discuss it with anybody because either your friends don't understand why you want to leave your perfectly good job or um, people are like, you are so insane or you just feel like you have a double life because you go home every night and looking for a new career, etc. So definitely finding that accountability and support is a huge thing that will ensure um, that you make a successful career transition. So what are the benefits when you go at a job search like this, right? So the benefits here are like you're going you're gonna to cut down on the amount of time that you are looking for jobs significantly. I was at a, um, I was hosting a, a workshop the other day and they, there were people there who told me that someone had told them that they have to at least job search for eight hours a week. And I was like, not if you have my formula, then you definitely don't need to do that. When you follow these steps that I told you tonight, taught you tonight, I guarantee you, you're not going to need to do that because you're going to know what you're looking for. You're going to know, you're going to come up with a plan and you're going to go for it. You'll also feel more confident and supported when you go at this the way I just explained. And you know that you won't land in the same situation, like, uh, in, sorry, you know that you won't land in a similar situation that you're in right now in a different company because you're going to know exactly what questions to ask in that interview process and who to talk to first before you just jump ship and go to something else. So why is it that people fail at this, right? Number one, they have no plan, they feel isolated, and they doubt every step of the way, and then they never invest in themselves or get the support and accountability. And the ultimate cost here is then time, money, um, sometimes they make horrible mistakes, they land in the same job, just in a different company, or the same terrible environment, just in a different company, and ultimately that causes a lot of stress. And then as a result, this can really negatively impact your health, your relationships, and 
people then just never get to have that impact that they desire because the number one thing that people normally say when you start digging into their career clarity is that they really want to help people and we really cannot help people or we can but we can help people so much better if we're in jobs that we love and we're not like self-absorbed the whole time in how unhappy we are so to succeed you really need to have a structure and a clear roadmap and support and accountability and so I really want to help you do that. And so I want to offer each one of you who are on the call tonight to do a 50-minute call with me. You can book that call at calendly.com forward slash Hanukkah. And if you're on your phone, don't worry, you're going to get an email with this um, little link as well. If you're sitting there and you're going, man, I, I really want more and I want more support and more accountability, then I have something that will help you as well. So my boot camp, I'm going to offer to you guys tonight at a very special price. I'm going to give you a, um, a discounted price here. Um, and this boot camp is a four week online course that's decked out with videos, worksheets, hand selected resource, resources, sorry, live group coaching calls, a private Facebook group. And you, when you invest in this program, you get lifetime access to this program. What is in this uh, program, right? It's a very structured state-by-state -state program. In week one, we focus all on clarity and getting you in the right frame of mind and pinpointing um, what you want for your life and your career. Then in week two, it's all about designing your perfect career. And I do all of this clarity work with a whole bunch of questions, exercises, tools, resources, um, the videos itself. Then in week three, it's all about conquering your fears, destroying your limiting beliefs, and uncovering and eliminating your self-sabotaging behaviors. And again, I do this through some of the exercises that I shared with you tonight, but then I also have an, a whole bunch of other things. We really kind of throw everything at it. Because when you can conquer these things, then it's so much easier to move forward. Then in week four, I've created this a career clarity test that is amazing to put all of your career ideas in and see whether you actually really enjoy them. Um, and then um, we also then go ahead and create a fail-proof implementation plan um, that can really help you to um, achieve your career goals. And again, we dig deep to design your ultimate career. Now, the results that you can expect when you do this um, bootcamp, as my uh, previous bootcamper, Chan, said, the Ultimate Career Bootcamp was extremely easy to follow and provided so much subconscious to conscious enlightening, enlightening learnings about myself. The exercises brought clarity to my passions and fire, which were previously dulled by the fear and insecurities that so easily cloud ourselves and daily lives. What took a few minutes to complete has provided me with goals that will last for decades. The return on investment was truly exceptional and should not be missed. I'm also offering some bonuses for you tonight. So as I just said, we're about to kick off the live group um, Ultimate Career Bootcamp. So you're going to get six live group coaching calls, which is valued at about $2.99. Then you're also going to get lifetime access to the private Facebook group and all future uh, bootcamp calls. I run this program about twice a year. You're also gonna be getting the done for you printable sheets to help you design your ultimate career, which is valued at $70 or 69. Um, and then there's also a bonus to help you with career branding, a LinkedIn optimization, all, all access to all the recorded audio that I've done in all my talks around town. And there's also a resume and cover letter refinement, and that is all worth about $623. But then last but not least, because all of you are here, the first five people to sign up is also going to get a 60-minute free coaching call with me, which is valued at $299. And if you enroll tonight before um, at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow evening, Evening, then you can take advantage of the early bird price of $397. Um, and you can get that by going to hanukkahantonelli.com forward slash bootcamp 
special. Again, you're going to get that email if you're on your phone. And I do have a payment plan available and you can get that. Um, the payment plan starts at 109 per month. And then I have a final case study for you guys. When I, um, Liana Gonzalez, who was the very first person that I put through boot camp, she was my little guinea pig. When I started the Ultimate Career Bootcamp, I had an idea of changing careers and an idea of what I wanted my new career to be. But I wasn't feeling confident, focused, or clear about why I wanted to make the change, or if my new career would be any better in the long run. I had alternating moments of confidence followed by total self-doubt. I took Hanukkah's Ultimate Career Bootcamp course last summer and I found my perfect job a few months later. I think of it as an investment in my future and my happiness. All right, so there you have it, guys. I'm just going to stop the share here and now I'm going to open it up. If you have any questions or there's anything that you'd like to ask me about the bootcamp or about anything that I've covered tonight, then please do go ahead. Um, and I'm going to just sit here and wait for you guys to type at me or you can even put your get yourself off of mute and just ask me if it's quicker for you. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. Would you be up for coaching someone else to also become a coach? Um, Ryan, <clears throat> I am more than welcome to, uh, or sorry, I'm more than happy <laughs> to coach people who want to become coaches. Yes, absolutely. Um, but when you want to become a coach, you a, have to have your own coach and you also have to do a certification program. I always sort of recommend that you do that. Um, if you're just tasting out the waters to see if it's uh, for you or if that person's just testing out the waters um, I'm more than happy to discuss the procedure and how it works with people and even do a couple of coaching calls ah gotcha yes absolutely Ryan says he is certified just not coaching full-time yes Ryan I um, I Actually, so one of my uh, clients, um, I called her my mini-me. I helped her to transition from um, HR director in at Santander and to quitting her job and becoming a Pilates instructor and a coach in the UK. So she's currently over there, and I'm still working with her and helping her with that. So yes, um, I do help coaches with that if you're already certified, though. Okay. Anybody else with any questions? Thank you, Ryan, for asking that question. Anything that I can help with? Anything that's come to mind, coming to mind even? I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of time to type. And I'm also going to fetch in the meanwhile all the links for you to put in your chat boxes and then you don't have to hop around between things. And then that's number one and then Calendly. Oh, there we go. All right, so any other questions, anything that I can help with? All right, well then I wanna thank all of you so much for coming tonight. Um, it really is um, such an honor to have you here and I'm so excited that you have taken this time to invest in yourself and to really take the steps needed. I also want you to know that it is absolutely possible to create exactly what you want. All you need is a little bit of support and just a fair, that fire in your belly. If you have that desire, that desire is gonna take you a long way. And then it's just about getting specific about what you want, getting some support around you, and before you know it, it can absolutely happen. So thank you all so much for coming. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to either email me, you're gonna get an email in about 10 minutes time with the links. Um, and you're also more than welcome to, um, to book that call with me, guys. Really book that call with me. If you're so, sort of on the fence whether this bootcamp is for you or w how to move forward, book that 15 minute conversation with me. Trust me, people go, oh my God, you know, that's very, like a very small amount of time. Trust me, I can help you in 15 minutes. 
All right, coaching is super powerful. So thank you again so much. Um, it was such an honor and a pleasure, and I'm excited um, to speak with you guys soon. All right, I'm gonna sign off. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>